Hello there, I am Dr. Purnendu Roy. I am a surgeon in Genesis Hospital, Kosh Park, Kolkata. And in continuation of the previous video of hernia, today we are going to discuss about inguinal hernia, which is also called groin hernia. So what is inguinal hernia? When abdominal content like intestine or fat comes out through a defect in the muscle in the lower abdomen in the groin area and comes up as a swelling near the groin or sometimes a swelling in the scrotum that's called inguinal hernia statistically males are more prone to inguinal hernia than women i mean trying to analyze the reason why it so happened because by birth the testicles are actually formed inside the abdomen and it comes down at the time of birth through the area of the groin, an uh, area called inguinal canal. And that sac usually closes after birth. Now, once this sac is closed, the contents from inside the abdomen cannot come out. So, when we say inguinal hernia, there are of two types. When this sac tends to remain open, a congenital by birth and fluid and sometimes intestinal content come out, that's called indirect inguinal hernia. It usually can happen in younger age group also, even in pediatric age group, which is also called congenital hernia. What is the other type, direct inguinal hernia? That usually happens in elderly group when the muscles become weak and that's why there is a direct bulge and there is no sac-like structures from the muscle weakness in the wall an area comes out and that's called a direct inguinal hernia. So what are the symptoms with which the inguinal hernia patient will come? Either they will complain that on one side or both sides there is a swelling appearing in the groin area while coughing or while straining lifting heavy weights and it automatically gets reduced on lying down or on relaxation. Number two, there can be pain at the time when there is a straining or coughing in the groin area. Number three, they can feel fullness of the area or a burning sensation in the groin area. And number four, sometimes they can present with a large swelling in the scrotal area on one side or both sides depending upon how advanced the hernia is. How do you diagnose? Because whenever we think of a disease, how do we confirm? Now, there is no need for elaborate investigations because it's so obvious. On clinical examination, you can see and you can reduce the hernia also if it is a reducible hernia. All that it requires is, is the test to be done to plan for the surgery. What happens if you don't treat? Because many times the patients keep asking, doctor, can we do anything with medicine? Well, let's try and understand this. Hernia is a defect in the muscle through which the intestine and the fat and the contents are coming out. So it's not a medicine which can stop. We need to repair the defect. So if it is untreated, what are the complications that can happen? A hernia, which is normally reducible, may develop additions in the surrounding tissue in the scrotum and it's called incarceration of a hernia, means it gets stuck and does not go back anymore. The next what can happen is can cause obstruction. Intestine can come out and at the area of the groin, the constriction and the ring can cause obstruction to the intestine and the patient can come with vomiting and abdominal pain and sometimes even distension. And the last is if this obstruction is not treated, it's called strangulation. The gut is intestine is so tightly constricted at the area the gut intestine may lose its blood supply and can become gangrenous. So, incarceration, obstruction, strangulation, these are deadly complications. So, what we conclude is that a hernia, after it is seen, should get operated. So, what's the treatment? Surgical repair? Broadly, it is classified under two types, which is conventional open surgical repair, where the defect is actually repaired. 
In olden times, there were several different types of technique which were available. One used to be called as bassinis repair, where the muscle was stitched with the inguinal ligament. Then there was another technique called shoulder ice repair, where the muscles were double-breasted and covered and repaired below. But nowadays, the technique is to give a support with a synthetic mesh. And this technique is called Lichtenstein's technique, in which it is a repair done and then the support given. And it makes it a strong and most favored technique of hernia repair. It can be repaired under local anesthesia, just giving injection and making that area numb. It can be done under regional anesthesia, when an injection is given in the spine at the back and you can't feel anything from navel downwards or it can be done under general anesthesia when you are put to sleep and then you recover after the hernia is repaired. The other is laparoscopic repair in which what we do is we use laparoscope or a telescope to go inside either inside the abdomen or in the extraperitoneal space and at the area of the defect in the groin we tend to put a mesh over there. Now there are a lot of debate about which is a preferred technique and different surgeons have got different opinion leaving probably the patient to be more confused. Personally my view or opinion is whatever has been the advantages of a minimally invasive side surgery microsurgery or laparoscopic surgery like decreased hospital stay, better cosmetic scar, quick recovery and joining the work. None of these things actually help in the hernia because whether it is laparoscopy or conventional, in both the cases you spend one or two days in the hospital. So some people prefer Lichtenstein technique which is a mesh repair of the hernia. There are a few other questions which always comes to the mind of a patient what to expect after the repair of hernia. Now I want to give few things is one there are many places it is done as a daycare so one comes in the morning gets a surgery done and can go back by evening. Sometimes the hospital stay is only 24 to 48 hours a person can get up in the evening on the same day of surgery and can go to the hospital. It's not like you are bedridden for five to six days. As far as pain is concerned, every pain can be taken care of with the modern painkillers and the medicines that we have with us. And within how long can one join back for work? Unless the person is into mechanical heavy work, a person should be able to go and get back to work within seven days. Is there any risk or complications? Now, if a surgeon says there is absolutely no risk or complications at all, that's probably not a 100% honest answer. Every procedure has got its own inherent risk. So there could be risk of the anesthesia. If we are operating on an elderly patient with cardiac and respiratory problems, there could be surgical complications or the risk things like, which is normal in all surgery, a bleeding, a clot formation, hematoma, infection, and lastly, recurrence in the long term. If the repair has not been good and if there has been infection, that can recur. A delayed complication is after a repair of a hernia surgery, it can recur again and might have to be done again. One or two precautionary advice given at the time of discharge after a repair of a hernia is, if you are a smoker, please quit smoking for some time because if you have cough and then there will be pressure at the area of the repair. If you do cough, put your palm on that so that the pressure doesn't come onto the stitch line directly. Avoid heavy weight lifting so that you don't strain. And also in case if you're constipated, please use laxative and don't go to the washroom and <clears throat> strain so that the pressure should not come over there. And that's what will prevent recurrence of the hernia. And if you want to know more about inguinal hernia and want to consult with me in chamber or online, please get in touch in the following number and get an appointment. Please look out for my next video, which is on umbilical hernia. If you enjoyed watching this video, please like, share and subscribe to my YouTube channel and keep enjoying 
several other videos to come up on health issues on charity and the trust work that we do from our GCT Genesis Educational and Charitable Trust our videos on education and on food and beverages which we run as a health cafe called Ecclesiastes. Thank you very much for watching.